Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Watcher of Realms. For today's video, we're going to do a hero guide on one of our newest heroes added to global server, Arrogance. The finest blood for the most untainted soul. So this hero caught my attention long before he was even live. But let me first say a little disclaimer. I am on the test server. This is not to be confused with the Forerunner server or the global servers, completely separate from both. It's just a testing space for limited content creators to be able to have resources to build heroes and try teams and make content on them as they're coming out. And yeah, I'm really having fun with it. It's a lot of work. My test server account is a work in progress, so bear with me. My gear is still not the best. I have to actually grind up more gear. And I have to build a lot more champion, which takes a lot of time. So doing my best to get pumping out some great content from the test server. I've already put out a video on Captain Rev here. But we have our friend Arrogance to talk about now. Also, quick note, the graphics are a bit dark on here for some reason. I don't know why, but it is what it is. All right, so Arrogance, why was I interested in him a long time ago? So normally at the end of a video, I would um, show <laughs> my buckets tier list, but let's do that at the beginning. So you could already see why. Who's this grayed out character right here that looks like they're amazing and everything? Hmm. <laughs> so I remember when I first started looking at his tier list and using it as a general guide, it really has been helpful as a newer player to get to know the characters and know where someone should be good. And I remember seeing this guy and for one, he just looks amazing. Aesthetic wise, he's so cool. Another nightmare, a faction hero. And yeah, you can't not, you can't miss this S plus, this S, and all these S's and A pluses across the board. So let's start by reading the description he has here, and then we're going to talk about him. So usable in almost every area of the game, Arrogance offers great damage output in all formats. At high awakenings, he can even be one of the best guild boss DPS. Incredibly versatile just stopping short of being the best in any area. So you could argue probably a hot set people say is the best hero in the game, but you know what? Because of his um, versatility, I kind of feel like he has a good fighting chance for that number one spot. But all right, shout to my bucket here, guys. Make sure you're also following him on YouTube wonderful resource and a really great content creator that's been playing long before global all right so arrogance why is he so good why is he so good in everything let's first take a look at his skills so his talent here um demon bow inflicts burning on the target demon blades in normal stance 30 percent chance to increase the hero's attack speed by 40. Stacks up to three times for 10 seconds. So burning deals 20% magic damage per second. It can coexist from different sources. So you can stack that, which is really a cool. So let's read his ultimate. Berserker stance. Inflicts, attacks inflict 360% damage. Increases basic attack range. Uses the blade instead when attacking enemies far away. The blade inflicts AoE damage to enemies around the main target, equal to 30% of that of the main target, along with adding additional burning to all enemies damaged. So he's not only got a normal fighter close range combat, he's got a ranged combat, he's got a damage over time, and oh wait, there's more. So his basic attack attacks one enemy, Within one tile with the demon blades, deals single target damage to enemies further away or airborne with the demon bow. So not many fighters can hit airborne units. So this makes him extremely valuable. 
He can literally do it all. This makes him be able to be played in literally any part of the game, which is so cool. I really love that. That's his basic. His basic can attack airborne units, not just like only at a certain time. Infernal Feast is passive. For every one enemy killed while in Berserker Stance, receives one attack speed bonus stack from the talent. When the stance ends, deals 180% AoE damage to up to 10 adjacent enemies two times. That's awesome. Um, someone in one of my chats was like, Oh, I really want the other guy that's coming out because I really need some AoE damage. I'm like, he can do it too. <laughs> he can do everything. Uh, we also have this passive Devil's Dance. Demon Bow or Demon Boomerang. 25% chance to attack two targets. Demon Blaze, 25% chance for double strikes. So this is just so, so nice. Like this Berserker stance versus normal stance. He kind of he increases his attack speed in normal stance. But my goodness, this this pass or this basic attack, being able to attack airborne units is just so valuable for a fighter. It really, really makes him just stand out above and his range is really good as well so let's take a look here look at that his attack range is actually pretty good so you guys know i love velk so he can hit forward and on the sides anti-air damage and burning as it says really really cool let's take a look at his awakenings which are pretty solid as well awakening one when in berserker stance all basic attacks restore hp five percent hp um, hell yeah. <laughs> I would definitely want an awakening on him. All basic attacks restore 5% HP. He has a self-heal, a self-sustain. That's so good. Just like getting the, um, I guess you could compare it kind of to Wrath and his A5, right? All right, then we have crit damage. And his awaken 3 here is deals 15% extra damage to targets with burning. Rage regen on the Awaken 4 and his Awaken 5. When entering Berserker Stance, immediately receives the maximum attack speed talent bonus. The first five attacks in Berserker Stance deal 100% extra damage. Whew, they, I mean, you could just read his kit and tell that he's a monster. You don't even need to play him to know that. You don't even need to play him. So, so good. Obviously, there's a lot of artifacts that could really benefit him well. If you're using him in Guild Boss and you have a Salazar or a Komodo in there, you can use Scarlet Hunt with him for sure. But a lot of these are really going to benefit. I mean, I don't think there's one perfect answer. He kind of anything that involves extra bonus damage or like some of those crit rate, crit damage boosting ones that are, I don't have here on the test server can be really solid as well. I have him in Flawless Blade, just as a little bit more of a random choice. It's not too important. But let's take a look at using him in some content. So Arena, again, I have this really weird um, setup here. I can't exactly um, <laughs> choose a strong opponent here on the test server yet until I do real Arena battles. But at least I'll show you how I'd probably use him. Uh, he is, like I said, a strong everything. He is a fighter. He is a close combat unit. He's a ranged combat unit. He can hit air units. He can do everything. So he's literally perfect to place here as the first damage dealer when you go into battle. And he's going to do a good job taking care of them on his own. Look at that. On his own. So, so nice. And then you could use someone maybe like Mari to slow them down, right? So if we want to just delay the enemy coming in to attack this, he can just kind of chill here. You also could try to slow them and prevent them from getting there in the first place. Um, at the entrance. I know a lot of people like to play with the corners as well. But he is just so, so good and so satisfying, honestly, to use. I'm going to bring Maul in here. I did steal some of Maul's gear to make him. So my Maul's not the best at the moment. But hey, I don't have to worry about winning here. This is a low-level arena. I really hope I wouldn't lose to this guy in bronze. But that gives a good example. He is great in arena. In any of the arenas, literally including the air ones, because he actually does air damage as well. 
Now I'm going to show a couple fights in Artifact Material Raid. This is definitely one of the areas he can shine, of course, as a melee damage dealer. Just the, he could be the main one attacking Salazar, plus he's got the extra range, like how I use Velk, to also attack some of those other enemies as they get close to Salazar, and you want to kill them to prevent them from going um, to him where he could heal. Uh, he's going to be really good damage. So let's just, I'm just going to do this auto fight and kind of show you what I used for a setup. So this is like stage 13. This is the when you start farming mythics. So you're going to have to do that for the sake of your hero's path. First hero's path is going to make you do stage 12. And then after you do stage 12, it's going to make you get flawless meteorite, which means you have to progress to stage 13. So once you're like, woohoo, I finally did stage 12, well, this one is right around the corner. All right, so I'm going to let this play. It's only two times speed, not as bad as like three times speed normally. So we're going to draw on Salazar to this spot right there and place Baron like usual. He's our tank. And then we're going to drop Salazar, or sorry, Wrath and Arrogance. And Arrogance is going to be able to hit on the other side here so he can help protect um, yeah, and kill some enemies as they approach. But it's so easy. I didn't even need to. Uh, I didn't even need to place all the other units for stage 13. And uh, look at who I'm using. Look at who I'm using. So I literally placed Wrath and Arrogance and Baron, and that was it. And Vortex to keep them alive, right? That was how good stage. Um, yeah, stage 13 was for me when I first tried it. And I'm not using the most OP gear. I will show you all my stats afterward. Um, I don't have him built perfectly. There's definitely room for improvement because I don't have the best gear on the test server. Honestly, the gear is better on my real account than it is on the test server. And uh, then let's go down here to stage 17. So I felt like this was a little bit more relatable. I can do stage 18. That is just, that's another level. I don't have as many people built right now that I'd want to put in that team that can survive. I don't have any of the extra special gear that you farm from those higher stages, you know, the red gear that instead of the mythic red options, I'll just call it. Uh, so my gear is okay at best. So let's go in and show you this fight as well. This is a little bit more of a later game thought, or not too late, later game, no, this is mid game. This isn't even crazy. Look at who we have in this roster. We're gonna put down Baron first and draw him in the middle where you can attack from four spots if we need to. Wrath and Arrogance are both attacking as well. And then we're going to place a Vortex for the heal. And that's going to be the core for the damage. Now it's just all about protecting them and letting them do as much damage as possible. It gets a little messy, but it's okay. So Wrath had to turn around and start fighting those enemies. We're going to want to drop some distractions, right? So what I did on this side, Arrogance is a little squishier than my Wrath, how I have him built. So I, brought, I dropped Mariel over here, who I have awakened five. She's over here to help kind of protect Arrogance so he can just do as much damage as possible. And then I actually put Scorch on the other side of Wrath so he could deal with the enemies coming in. And as you can see, Cyclone was at the top. So without the extra boost, this did take a little bit more time, but it really was all about just throwing the enemies up in the top corner. Actually, let's see. It was so much easier than I expected once I got my people semi-built, right? So let's go ahead here, map info. So as the you draw Salazar down to where he's just barely into that last tile, you bring your two main fighters, which can be just Wrath and Arrogance and no one else. Like, that's it. Those are the ones you need to attack the boss. No one else really needs to attack the boss. So... Uh, as long as you have them okay built. Otherwise, you can put the other fighters in these top these top other positions and four people can attack the Salazar boss all at once. Um, and you can place defenders on the other sides of the two fighters that are kind of doing the most damage to prevent the prevent them from having to turn around and fight the mobs coming in. So that way they're focusing all their attacks on the main boss. And then up at the top here, like the top right corner or left corner, you're going to get one in the top uh, left corner first. I just placed a Cyclone at level 50 up there with OK gear, and he does some crowd control just to kind of delay those mobs from coming down. And same thing. Once it got later into the battle, I placed a Volca or any other random fighter 
up there as well just to help deal with the mobs coming down. If you can kill the enemies before they even get down there in the first place, then you're in a pretty good spot. If it gets to the point where there's just too many mobs and it's impossible to defend, then you know you don't have enough damage. But my goodness, he is so good at being the main DPS or a duo with someone like Wrath. Now, stage 18 is very hard. I don't know. I'm, I'm, he could absolutely be a main core unit there. But I just don't have the survivability. The smacks just kind of kill everybody. So I need better gear stats or a, just a improved account overall to be able to handle those smacks or maybe a shield or something. Maybe a little extra protection, but yeah, good either way. Let's go ahead and do a battle with stage 18. Why not? So I'm going to use him like I do Valk, right? So one thing I love to do with Valk is this. From behind the wall, she's kind of protected. Well, you know what? He can be too. So they're both covering behind the wall just to do a ton of damage. We can use Mari up front to slow and freeze. And they can just smash. Of course, you can place other units first if you want as well. Like Maul is really great here because he can go in the back row and still cover the whole area, which means you can keep him alive a little bit easier and worry a little bit less about your healing. Now, Mari, I think I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and slow them down. We're gonna use Iona as another damage source so she can come in here. And then I'll bring Vortex in for some heals because Mari's probably going to die. Let's go. They're protected. I would. I also should have used Dolores, but I actually haven't even built my Dolores on this account yet. But I would definitely suggest having a Dolores here on the corner to boost the damage of everyone else. Oops. Oh, that's fine. Maul again with his ultimate, and Mari again with hers. I use. I'm using um him as like he's kind of mediocre. Let's be honest, but it's fine. Poor, poor. Oh, I forgot. I don't have space for him. Let's just leave him out. I might use Lightlock in here just for some extra... You know what? Yeah, let's use Lightlock. A little extra damage and a little healing if we need it. And here we're going to use Maul Maul's ultimate again. We can smash. Try to keep everyone alive. Iona's ultimate's ready. This is perfect timing. I think we're going to be very good here. As the boss comes in, we're going to take no prisoners. I'm not too worried about this at all. Ultimate's popping. Let's smash. And luckily, we don't really have to worry about the ultimate for <laughs> um, arrogance. He kind of uses it, you know, it's kind of one of those more passive things. It's automatic, right? It's just switching to Berserker stance. And we're just smashing the boss with a pretty easy to build team, all things considered. I'm using Velcra, who's another legendary yes, and she's amazing. And that's why I'm using her, because I'm just trying to showcase her a little bit better, because I feel like she's still underrated. But you don't need Valkyrie. You could just use another AoE mage. If you have Comet or Vierna or anyone else, I mean, there's so many other people you could have used instead of Valkyrie here. I just wanted to show that as a fun example. Also, if you pull for Captain Rev and you have him instead of Valkyrie, you can use him in the same spot to do some extra damage while being protected behind the wall, and he gives good crowd control. Or even that little freaking cyclone could be back there as crowd control as well. So let's take a look at the stats. So from behind the wall, Arrogance here is doing a solid damage, keeping up with Maul, who is a heavy hitter. Iona's my beast AoE mage in this comp, but look at Velcra. This is accidentally a Velcra showing, right? <laughs> She's just such a beast. Of course, she was my very first unit placed, but either way, I'm really, really proud to see her doing so well. But let me quickly show you my build. I realize I didn't really linger on that very long. So overall, you know, you saw me using characters with pretty meh gear overall. I mean, yes, I have mythic gear, but it's not perfect for stats. I also had some lower tier heroes like Mamari is only level 50. Oh, I forgot. Mario is only five star, not six star. Um, I did six star Scorch, but I forgot to level him up. And a Soul Day is definitely worth a 6-star as well. She's a great defender, especially with Awaken 1. Uh, and I kept Wrath at only Awaken 3 because that's how I'm using him on my real account right now. But to Awaken 5, once we get that other Soul Stone, he's a beast. But this is just, a, there's a lot of really fun characters to play with here that are not a team full of legendaries. You can really push late game content with a decent team here. So... I did get him 100% crit rate and 100% crit damage. I would like that crit damage a little bit higher, 
But you know what? I put my best gear I could on him and we got 10k attack. Uh, we have crit right here with a good attack bonus and crit damage roll. For me, this is good. Nothing rolls this good normally. I don't know what yellow looks like typically. Same thing here. This up this high is not that bad for me. Attack bonus, attack bonus. So we've got some solid attack on him. Also here, I just put the crit rate set just to give him a little bit more. And we got a decent crit damage roll, crit rate, and attack bonus on him here. So he's just a typical damage dealer that you want to build with attack percentage, crit rate, and crit damage. If you get some attack speed in there, that's not going to be bad either, especially considering his kit kind of works well with the boosted attack speed and it's really great for fighters but he is a beast i love him he i think he's absolutely one of the best if not the best hero in the game and he's the one that i'm going to be summoning for whenever he's out there 